I think I've been having some serious debates about that WAP video, man. Now, WAP video is it's nice. It's a well shot video, mm-hmm. but it's something that is is I, I'm not gonna say it needs to be censored. I said it, it needs to be. Excuse me. It needs to be um, placed out of out of reach of kids, like any other poison. Mm. It needs to be placed out of the reach of kids. It needs a uh, child protective cap on it because in the days of what, what we live in at right now, in the days of child molesters up the gang gang, kids getting snatched. Man, you don't need no kids singing that kind of shit, doing that kind of stuff, um, and around the wrong people. I, I as as a, as a venue owner. I see a lot of parents don't have the parenting skills to separate certain things, keep certain things from their kids. Mm. And um, this is why I say sometimes I have a different perspective. I see this stuff up close and personal. I'm not, I'm not wishing, I'm not guessing. I'm telling you what I know. I've had venues at my club, baby showers uh, at the club, and uh, I, the DJ is playing all the all the cuss versions. You got old folks, you got kids in the room. You got all, everybody sucking, everybody fucking, woo, 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 woo. I walk into this dude and I say, hey, man, I put him to the side real cool. Hey, man, look here, dude. Bro, I've been doing this for a long time. You got kids in the room. You ain't got the clean versions. And and I, I did that, trying to, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling embarrassed for the for the grown folks. They trying to smile. And they ain't even, you know, the grown folks is trying to, trying to have a good time. And the kids is doing their little twerk thing. And, and, and the mamas are doing their thing. And then the mama came to me. She said, my DJ told me you told him to play the clean version. I hired him. I hired you to rent your room. I hired him to DJ. He played what I wanted him to play. Wow. Damn, my bad. Damn. Okay. So when you have that kind of mindset that sometimes run rapid in the community, when you got people playing this stuff in the car with their kids, when you got a, a nursery, nursery schools or pre, uh, daycares, have to give parents notes to tell them, hey, if your kids come to school smelling like weed, I have to report. I'm a, I'm a mandatory reporter to the state. I have to report you. Oh, man. Okay? Horrible. Well, you have to be told you can't smoke weed around your kids. Okay? It's real hard to, for people to understand where I'm coming from. I've seen this. Mm-hmm. I, I know people that do have, have daycare centers and have the right parents' notes. Hey, baby, please, don't have your kid come to school smelling like weed. I'm about to turn you in, okay? That bitch is a snitch. No, that bitch ain't a snitch. That bitch is doing her job. She's protecting your kids from you, okay? So you have people that have this kind of mentality. And I, I, I take my son to school. I took my son to school every day from uh, from kindergarten to the graduating, okay? And a many a morning, man, I'd be pulling up at, at the train tracks and folks got their kids and they shit is bumping like a son of a gun. And, and they got the x rated versions in the music, and, and the kids is bumping, mama bumping, kid bumping, mama partying. If mama approve it, kid baby going to approve it, OK? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a, it's just like my mama, my mama saying, Al Green, I learned to love Al Green. Mm-hmm. And no, Megan is not supposed Megan and Cardi B are not your kids' uh, role models. You are. You are. So if they see you. Groove into it, and you don't make a, you don't make a difference, a separation. Then that that's a sign of approval. Same thing. Well, they had uh, worse records than that back in the day. Yes, they did. But I tell you what, we had hell getting them. My mm-hmm. mama went. My mama, all them party records with Red Fox and Richard Pryor. They played that shit when we was in the bed, or at least they thought we was in the bed. Okay, mm-hmm. at least they thought they, they thought enough of us to separate us from that kind of shit. Okay. When I wanted to get that kind of stuff, I had to go out and get it on my own, and I couldn't let my mama know I had it. Yeah, it was accessible, but I would dare not cuss in front of my mama. Okay, so these, these this, this is the argument we have. And I, it was uh, this, this was on the radio the other day, and a lady was saying, "Well, they had this one lady. She had a song about she, you know, my, my boys like my pussy. I give them, I give them the class, blah blah. Oh, song, oh, in the twenties. Okay, and yes." It was, oh, some yeah, raunch- I know that. It, it was some raunchy it, shit. But it, it wasn't it's called dirty jazz. It's dirty, called dirty jazz. jazz dirty movie. jazz. I love, okay. I love that. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. And it, it was dirty jazz. But mm-hmm. here I am, 63 years old, and I just heard it for the first time. Uh-huh. Okay. I just yeah. heard it for the first time. 
Okay. I know exactly the song you're talking about. Her it, name is something Bogan. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not mm -hmm. in my wheelhouse. Okay. I had never heard that song till this person mm -hmm. told me about it, and they was debating on the radio. Yes, I heard Millie Jackson. I like Millie Jackson, but Millie Jackson was somebody that I, but my mama played in my house, and Millie Jackson was she was very provocative, mm -hmm. but she she was in uh in or she would insinuate things. Okay, mm. she would insinuate things. Yes, and stroking Clarence Carter, I'd be stroking. Okay, yes, he be stroking, but he ain't stroking to the east, stroking to the west, stroking to the one I love the best. Okay, mm -hmm. it's nothing. If they they took the time to put a cover on it. Okay, they put they took time to make some put some clever on it. I, blue songs, cheating in the next room. They put a mm -hmm. cover on it. They didn't just come out and say my wet ass pussy. And it right. didn't, it didn't it come out and say that shit, okay? That it was it was it, it was a different it was different. And I think what for for men, here's where the chauvinistic part uh, comes in from being an older cat. Sometimes we just think better of women, okay? We know we ain't shit. <laughs> we know we know we gonna do something, but sometimes. You think you, you want to think better of women, okay? You want to think the stuff that your mom, that your dad would do, you would be heartbroken to tell your mama do. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. There's certain things that your, if you I saw your dad do, your, you saw your dad what's like, well, boom, she she sure is pretty. Your mama said the same thing. She, he, damn, he's fine. You would be you, mama, okay? Yeah. Yep. The thought of somebody's mama giving your daddy head would make you have a cringe, okay? It, it, it would make you have a heart attack. Okay? Look at you. You uncomfortable right now. Exactly. The, thought of, the thought of your mama doing that to your daddy would make you. Uh -huh. but, but you see you see what I'm saying? So it's yeah. we, have, we we look at women at different ways. Now, yes, there are hoes out there. And some women are hoes by default. Okay? But that's not the majority of the females. And as a man that tries to give... A woman, the benefit of benefit of the doubt. I work strip clubs, man. I give them. I don't give them what they do. I'm gonna give them benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. That's just me. You a yeah. lady first till proven to be a hoe. Till thank you. You a lady first till you proven yeah. to be a hoe. Yeah. Okay. And even then, I'm gonna give you the respect of a human being until you prove me or push me to do do or say something else. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. the game is supposed to go. That's how my game goes. I can't speak yeah. for everybody else. That's how my game is, okay? So yeah. when I speak, I, I, I've, again, I am nobody's proof. I didn't ran strip clubs. I'm a strip club promoter. I didn't polish the pole. I didn't wipe the <laughs> pole off for the strippers. I didn't got on the ones. I've won strip clubs, male and female. So you're talking to somebody who, I'm, I'm somebody who's in the game on a whole nother level, not just somebody who, who was on the sideline speaking his opinion? No, 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 no. I've been in the game in the trenches on another level. So when I'm when I speak from a different respect perspective, that's because I, I've seen it from a different side. So that's my that's it for me. Y'all got me got me worked up. But yeah, I think that as men, as men we expect a little bit more, uh, um, a little bit more, a little bit more out of women. That's all. And, um, yeah. And, the woman that I, I like the most, um, I used to love Dina Howard. Okay. Oh. Okay. I used to love freak Dina Howard. Morning, freak in the morning, morning freak in the yeah. evening. That's that. That was enough for me right there. Okay. That was it. And she was raunchy back then, right? That now was, you listen to it. It sounds like Disney if you listen that to was, it. That was that's that. They might play that on Disney Channel right now. Okay. <laughs> Even Salt and Pepper, Salt and Pepper, Salt and Pepper, push Salt and Pepper, push it. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, everybody was. You know, and when it got to the club. It was pussy good. It wasn't. It was pussy, pussy good. Okay. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. When they got okay. to the club, that's what. Okay. That's what. That's what they sang, and the girls sang uh, it in the club. Pussy real good. Okay, and that's what the girls sang. There was never a version of that song like that, but that became the um, the club lyric that the girls would chant out while they was dancing. Okay. So. Wow. Yes, okay. We had Luke. We had um, we had Richard Pryor, we had Red Fox, all of them was nasty as hell, man. But they all yeah. had a, a they all had a section in the record store, okay? Yeah. That was the adult section, okay? Yeah. You know, 
times have changed so much. What used to be a, the adult section became mainstream. And mm -hmm. Dre would tell you, NWA would tell you, they never planned to go mainstream. They were always planned to be underground. That was their goal, to be underground, be underground kings. And then the media grabbed them and put them on the front line and made them who they, who they became. Okay, so it, it, now, because of social media, what used to be in the back room at the, uh, at the video store is on the front shelf yeah. where everybody can see it. And that's the problem. Not yeah. that I, 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 hey, y'all have the right to be all the hoes you want to be, okay? But it just, I think it's, it's a spot for it and not on the front shelf. 